Previously on WAPTEC, I made a video about a viral audio file. People are trying to figure out it's lost media, and I made a conclusion that I thought it was most likely a faked audio recording. I was completely wrong, most likely, and I'm going to explain why, but I'm going to get to the point. The audio recording was recorded sometime after 1990, most likely. It's not really limited that much, up to 1997 or 1999. The recording name is called Everyone Knows That or Ulterior Motives. It's an unknown source. We don't really know the name of it. Next, my assertions at the time were based on a set of presumptions I got from Reddit and also because I fixated on looking up one peculiar thing about it. So I'm going to recant all of this and recount all of this. And this is an addendum, and that's spelled with a D-U-M-B by WAPTEC. I'm going to start over from the beginning, but to the point, if you're looking it up, it's not limited to television broadcasts. It's not even limited to broadcasts. No, it's not. And also, just because it was recorded in 1991 or later doesn't mean it can't be older. It could be much older. A lot older. Let's go. <clears throat> October 7th, 2021, on some web board like Name That Song or something, a user account was created under the name Carl92. That doesn't mean necessarily the person was born in 1992. The person, somewhere along the line, indicated that he was from or had lived in Spain. That's not relevant because that doesn't narrow it down at all. He posted 14 comments total we have to work with and then faded away. And posted two audio recordings, one of which is gone, and I'd love to know what it was. And the other one is the one we're talking about. It's a 17-second sound file. And here's the data he gave about it in one or another comment. Instead of doing it in one comment and posting and running away like I wish he did. The file date on that file, when he looked at it before he uploaded it, showed the year 1999. He didn't tell us anything else, like day and month. He said he found it on a burned DVD that he had possession of, and that it was a backup from when he, or someone else, let's say it could be, but he, said he was learning to capture digital audio recordings using a PC computer microphone. That's not a verbatim quote, but pretty close. <clears throat> it was from an unknown source. He didn't know if it was a TV, a radio, a tape recording. He doesn't remember. He was using it to experiment to see if he could make audio samples on a computer. That means it was put on a hard drive on a computer, and the computer had a time and date stamp to it. When he burned it to a DVD, there was an option for burning backup copies where you say original recording date, last alter date, or just use today's date for burning. So 1999 only means that's the newest it can be, not the oldest. Now, the recording, this is after the fact, was found to have a note in it or, an, or a, a tone in it. That tone was found to have either exactly this frequency or very close to it of 15,734 cycles per second, 15 kHz. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to mention that audio recordings made on all sorts of media have an upper frequency limit either for practical reasons or because it simply can't do a better recording than that. And computers sometimes, but not always, have an upper frequency limit too. But it's almost arbitrary because most computers, after a certain date, operated fast enough that you could have circuits that could sample audio at very high frequency. So the computer shouldn't be considered a limit, unless it's before a certain date. What about the microphone? Again, microphones of a specific variety, the older varieties, have an upper frequency limit. But after a certain date, one of the most widely available and cheap microphones existed that could pick up ultrasonic signals like this. And it was called the Mr. Microphone. Yeah. 1978, the Mr. Microphone was produced, and it used a module, a little capsule, called an electric condenser microphone. <clears throat> and it would send a signal to your FM radio. Now, one of the peculiarities about it that people discovered, including myself, is that it sometimes would make the little LED for stereo to come on because it would, it would feedback, not at an audio frequency you could hear, but at like 19 kHz or whatever it is, that told the sound system that it was a stereo broadcast. That's a pilot tone in an ordinary FM transmission to say, look for a sideband AM signal to create stereo. 
It was like 19 kHz or something like that. Ridiculously high frequency. In fact, the electric condenser microphone practical application was done in the 1960s. And by 1990, you could get ones that would pick up sounds in 200 kHz because they were used for ultrasound uh, and for echolocation for focusing cameras. Yeah. In fact, um, the cheap electric condenser microphones dominated during the 1980s would create these feedback effects that would confuse all sorts of pilot tone detectors. So on cheap equipment, you could do all sorts of dumb things that would screw things up. And on the expensive stuff, they put in a filter. Now, this is important. A pilot tone for FM and the pilot tone for what we're going to talk about for stereo TV is a sine wave. That means it has a very smooth curve to it and you can notch it out because it only makes one note. Anything that isn't smooth shaped will make lots and lots of overtones going above and below its frequency and they're called uh, overtones and undertones. True story. <clears throat> Let's go back to this. Now the recording was found to have this 15 kHz high frequency tone and I'm saying based on sound cards that were able to record that were commonly available. We're not looking for unusual ones. 1991, 1990 is the earliest recording date. That's not actually true completely, but let's say commonly available where you didn't have to know what you're doing. Again, this guy was experimenting with doing sampling. That doesn't mean he was building a sampler. Let's continue. And he had a microphone that was made after 1978. That doesn't narrow anything down. Again, a Mr. Microphone would pick up almost 20,000 cycles per second <clears throat> by accident. What operating system would he be using? Let's just get this out of the way. Windows 3 and 1, 9, Windows 95 and Windows 98. He could have also been using DOS. That's important. Picking up this frequency can be caused by any of the following. Let's see which one you think is more likely. One, let's talk about the Reddit posting. A 1984 to 2009 time range, MTS sine wave tone only used in 10 countries to transmit stereo. Okay, that's, that's cool. That narrows it down, doesn't it? Or every fucking TV ever. TV sets from literally the Second World War to 2009 that used a big glass tube had two sources for exactly the same frequency. One of them was the deflection coil that drew the picture. You see, it had to coil above and below that made a magnetic field that would bend the beam. <clears throat> and it went across the screen 15,734 times a second. And those coils, once they get old by five years, will make this noise, and you'll hear it if you have, unfortunately, my ability at the time, being able to hear that shit. And it's not very loud, but you can hear it. Guess what else in the TV set would make it? The flyback transformer. The flyback transformer is named for the wave shape where it would draw a voltage going up and then jump back, flyback to the beginning of the wave shape, creating a triangle wave that's been cut off called a sawtooth wave. <clears throat> and it's loud, like 90 to 100 decibels. If it's over five years old, the potting material it's in isn't going to keep it quiet anymore, so you get this noise. Guess what else produced this besides TV sets? Like literally every TV set ever since the Second World War. 1990s computer monitors also include the same flyback coil, and they didn't have to be coupled to the refresh rate, so it would produce independently this loud goddamn noise too. So the guy doing this on a computer in the 1990s with a microphone that's cheap and readily available, pointing it at whatever audio source, might have been picking up this noise from his own computer monitor, a TV set, etc. Side note, one of the other things these chips, the circuits were used to create this sawtooth wave, guess what else you could use it for? The voltage reference for sampling music. So literally the audio recording circuit, if he homebrewed it himself or somebody else built one and gave it to him, maybe, was, maybe, maybe somebody made one and gave it to him so he could have something to play with, <clears throat> might have been based on a flyback circuit sawtooth generator because they were commonly used because they're right off the shelf and use that as a sample timing 
for audio recording. And if you wanted to sample triple triple sample, you just tell it to use a different frequency bias, but it would still be derived from this. So of course it would create a third harmonic, 15,734 cycles per second. There's literally a dozen damn sources I haven't even brought up here. The circuit that made the recording could have made this noise and injected it by accident. The TV set in his room could have caused it. The computer monitor on the computer he was doing the recording from could have made this. All it'd have to be is a monitor that was more than five years old. Again, this is the same technology from World War II forward. Or we have to look in 10 countries that had stereo broadcasts and assume it was the signal getting through the speakers. Or it's just the fucking TV set or the computer monitor. So again, this clue that they found on Reddit that seemed so limiting so we could actually narrow it down turns out to be them, and including me, even though in the video at the 2 minute and 40 second mark I noted, this is very similar to, but it can't be identical to the noise off of, the, of a bad computer monitor or TV set. Yes, it can. In fact, that's more likely. It's, it's, well, how would we test it? <clears throat> I mentioned the harmonics. If it's a sawtooth wave, it'll have odd harmonics. It'll have others, too. Not because of the sawtooth upswing, but the jump down. That jump down, if it happens periodically, will create odd harmonics more often than not. They work out to be exactly 47,202 cycles per second. And also, 5,244 cycles per second exactly. If you find that in the recording, that's a dead bang proof that this was a sawtooth wave. It's just the monitor that he had on his uh, for his computer, or maybe a TV set nearby. And if you don't find it, it still could be. Unless somebody can analyze this audio recording and really get that 15 kHz signal nailed down, we don't know. Now, you can look at the audio recording and figure out what it was sampled at. Okay, that's fine. But everything after 1990 was able to make this recording, and again, homebrew sampler circuits made before that, often based on the same chip that would make the signal anyway, could also be used. And I'm not even bringing up literally hundreds of other varieties that were made and sold. They were made by people in college to make uh, something to record sound. <coughs> I mean, that's... They're also used for digital versions of sampler and playback things for doing effects. They were commonly available to guitar geeks. It's always the goddamn guitar players. Anyway, so anyway, but that signal from the ass end of a computer monitor or TV set or also in a video camera is also used to create the MTS stereo signal. Okay, but the most likely thing is just a monitor itself or a TV set nearby. Now, the other thing is that means this doesn't have to be from a TV recording or a TV playback. It also means it could be. It could also be from a VHS VCR. It just has to be audio with any, any TV set in the building making noise. It would be less likely if there was more than one TV or a TV and a computer monitor or something like that, but even that wouldn't stop it from happening. That's it. That's the entire video. This recording called Everyone Knows That and or Ulterior Motives was made sometime after 1991 through 1999. It was very likely made not just, I mean, I originally had a range of 1995 forward, it's 1991 to 1999. Now, that sounds like I'm not narrowing it down enough. Wait till this part. That doesn't mean the recording was made during that time as far as it being broadcast. This recording could have been made much earlier. There's no reason for you to decide it's a 90s song. This could have been made anywhere from any year. It just has to be a recording played back on a speaker and he's recording it with his microphone. The only thing about the 15 kHz signal is there was a TV or a monitor on in the room. And again, he was recording it using a computer. The computer probably made the note. The note. I also want to point out a couple of different varieties of computer monitor, before you bring it up, will produce other frequencies for flyback. But again, they have third harmonics that are 15 kHz as well. They're triple overscan monitors, that's, that's why. <clears throat> so what's the point of this video? I was a dumbass on the previous video, and I'm making up for it in this one. Number two, the people on Reddit fixated on the frequency only being used for stereo broadcast. It's also just part of how TVs worked, and virtually every monitor at the time as well. So what does this tell us? It's a recording that could be from any year before 1999. Period. 
Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.